Please note, part of this story, the questions asked of the witnesses are fictional because at the time of the Taylor trial, shorthand reporting had not come into popularity, nor was court reporting efficiently done in the making of a transcript of evidence to be used in an appeal to the state court of appeals. The judge would write the appeal, the lawyers would write out the evidence or testimony given by each witness in a narrative style. These transcripts were not done in the present day question and answer style as only the answers are given by the witnesses that was recorded. If the lawyer's transcripts did not agree on the testimony given by the witness, the judge would then write the questions which caused the disputed evidence in the transcript of the trial. This is done only in this transcript. But according to Mr. Johnson, there were 12 exceptions that were supposed to be sent to the appellate court with the transcript. These exceptions, whatever they were, never made it to the court and now have been lost to time. The following is a paraphrase of what is found in Charles Johnson's book about the testimony. This is in reference to the trial of Ira Mullins versus the widow Vanover over the land in Candom in Jenkins, Kentucky. Because Dr. Taylor had testified against Ira Mullins in that trial, a threat was made. This is what was recorded in the Dr. Taylor trial concerning that threat. Noah Hubbard testified that he lived on Birchfield Creek. The witness would further testify that he and Dr. Taylor would have a conversation at his house about the shooting of Ira Mullins. He said that Dr. Taylor told him that, quote, some person or persons had shot through Ira Mullins' window into his bedclothes, but it was not him, unquote. The witness testified that this was because Ira Mullins had offered $100 to have Dr. Taylor killed on Saturday. However, Ira's bed was shot into on Sunday. The witness then stated that Dr. Taylor had then told him that he was in Kentucky when Ira Mullins had offered the reward to have him killed. Hubbard then stated that, quote, he said that he was going to keep in the brush and keep the law on his side, unquote. The witness then stated that Mr. Collins came at this point in the conversation and nothing more was said. He thought that the conversation happened on court day before Ira Mullins was killed. The witness also stated that he did not have a very distinct recollection of the conversation. However, Dr. Taylor did not have a Winchester with him and he did not remember about the pistol. This concludes the testimony of Noah Hubbard. The defense did not have any recorded questions of Mr. Hubbard. We at Kentucky Tennessee Living would like to thank you for watching our series on the Killing Rock. Don't forget to hit the like button as more likes we receive, the more likely YouTube will suggest our videos to other viewers. Also to receive notice when we upload a new video, be sure to subscribe and click the bell for notification. We thank you for continuing to support Kentucky Tennessee Living as we bring to you the history of the Appalachian Mountains. We must remind everyone that the story names Killing Rock the off -told Tales and Killing Rock the Untold Story and Killing Rock the Trial are all under Kentucky Tennessee Living copyright.